the top stories tonight in Y News. House Speaker Martin Romualdez believes that the trilateral leader summit between the United States of America, the Philippines and Japan will bring significant benefits to Filipinos and the broader Indo-Pacific region. The Department of Health, or DOH, issues a warning to the public regarding the threat of pertussis or whooping cough, especially among children who have associated illnesses and those who are malnourished. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. reiterates that after April 30, the consolidation of franchises for public utility vehicles will no longer be extended. And we will discover why the United Kingdom decided not to suspend its arms sales to Israel despite the pressure on the British government over the recent airstrike that killed eight workers from the World Central Kitchen, or WCK. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Wednesday, the 10th of April, 2024. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UN TV news and rescue social media channels. I am Harding Delgado. First in the news. House Speaker Martin Romualdez believes that the Trilateral Leaders Summit between the United States of America, the Philippines and Japan will benefit the Filipinos and the Indo-Pacific region. Meanwhile, the USA says expect more joint patrols in the South China Sea. Rosa Likos will tell us why. The historic Philippine-Japan-USA Leaders Summit in Washington on Thursday, April 11 will be beneficial to the Filipinos and the Indo-Pacific region. According to Speaker Martin Romualdez, economic cooperation is the center of the trilateral meeting and the deeper economic integration of the Philippines with the United States and Japan will benefit the Filipino people, particularly in terms of jobs and livelihood opportunities. House Assistant Majority Leader Lanao del Sur First District Representative Sia Alonto Adyong highlighted the importance of dialogue and collaboration in addressing regional challenges. For House Assistant Majority Leader La Union First District Representative Francisco Paulo Ortega, the economic partnerships and regional security is the potential of the trilateral summit. Assistant Majority Leader Sambalis 1st District Representative Jefferson Konghun recognizes the need for such multilateral engagements to deepen our ties and foster greater understanding and cooperation among the citizens. The very first meeting between PBBM, U.S. President Joe Biden and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is also set to take place to address the escalating tensions in the West Philippine Sea. Meanwhile, more joint patrols can be expected in the South China Sea, according to USA. This is after the drills conducted by USA, Australia, the Philippines and Japan last weekend. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan made a statement before the Trilateral Leaders Summit. On the naval patrols, we just saw Trilateral plus Australia, a new form of quadrilateral joint naval patrols last week, so you can expect to see more of that in the future. On the other hand, fellow countrymen have divided views regarding the government's response to the issue of the West Philippine Sea dispute. Some believe that the government is doing enough to defend our rights in the contested territory, while others feel that the government's efforts are lacking. Kasi binubuli tayo ng binubuli. Hindi naman tayo gumaganti. Di bali wala lang. Binubuli lang tayo ng binubuli. Ang tingin ko po ay siguro bantayan ng gobyerno yung pong ating uh panukala na itigil na po yung ginagawa po ng China. Kasi po, kung nalaban naman tayo ng force to force, tingin ko po ay uh, lalaban din ng China. So, magkakagulo po ng um, matindi at ma- marami po madamay. Kailan po malag na? Nambubuli na eh. Parang sa akin, sapat na siguro yun. Kasi ginagawa naman ng lahat ng magagawa nila para maprotektahan tayo. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Health, or DOH, warns the public to be cautious against the whooping cough or pertussis, particularly for children with associated illnesses and malnourished. Based on records, Calabarzon region tops with highest pertussis cases in the country. Dante Amento tells us why. 
Department of Health or DOA Chief Ted Herbosa disclosed that there are already over 1,000 cases of pertussis across the country. Over 50 died or 5% fatality rate and majority of them were children. Herbosa explained that this respiratory disease is more severe particularly in very young children, malnourished and those with existing illnesses. So may mga bata may kidney disease, may leukemia, may pag tinamaan pa ng pertussis, yan baka yan ang mamatay. O baka yan pa yung mamatay. So yun yun. Very young, may, uh, may ano tawag ito, malnourished or undernourished, may associated condition, at yung late na diagnosis. In addition, hazardous chemicals such as from cigarettes, vape, and even vehicles would contribute to weakening one's immune system. Thus, the DOH plans to have 95% fully immunized children in the country against vaccine-preventable diseases like pertussis. The most important is the vaccine. If you don't have it, if you don't have a vaccine, you can still have it. The best defense is really vaccine, the pentavalent vaccine. Meanwhile, Secretary Herbosa also revealed that currently, Calabarzon region has the highest number of pertussis cases with 187, followed by the National Capital Region with 158 cases, Region 3 with 132 cases, and Region 7 with 121 cases. These areas have more cases compared with the same period last year. The increase is Region 3 and Region 7. So, mukhang may transmission doon in the last two weeks of March. Dante Amen to UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Some schools and cities have already made adjustments to school hours due to the extreme heat being experienced in the country. State Weather Bureau Pagasa expects this to continue until mid-May. Consequently, guidelines regarding the suspension of classes due to extreme heat are expected to be issued soon. Jed Neresina tells us why. Due to the extreme heat being experienced across the country, some schools and cities have already made some adjustment to school hours. Just like in Manila, the student's class is just a half day or from 6 in the morning to 12 o'clock in the afternoon until the next month. While in Makati City, they have reduced class hours starting last Monday, April 8. The morning shift is done from 6 to 10 in the morning, while the afternoon shift is from 3.30 in the afternoon to 7.30 in the evening. There are some schools that are already implementing online classes. In relation to this, the Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or PAGASA forecasts warm temperatures until the middle of May. Yung ganitong scenario na mainit at saka maalinsangan dahil sa easterly at saka sa high pressure area is posible pa rin na mangyari hanggang sa kalagitnaan ng Mayo. So ilan linggo pa natin itong mararamdaman and possible sa first half ng May ay mas mata matataas pa yung mga heat indices natin na maitatala. According to weather specialist Benison Estareja, they have recorded 40 to 41 degrees Celsius heat index here in Metro Manila. While in other places in the country, it reaches 44 degrees Celsius such as the Gupan, Pangasinan. According to Pagasa, there are already steps to adjust the guidelines regarding the suspension of classes due to the experienced excessive heat weather. Yes, sa ngayon nagkakaroon na ng steps ang Pagasa in coordinating with the Department of Education at saka yung Commission on Higher Education para magkaroon ng implementing guidelines at saka mga rules and regulations kung um, kailan ba magsususpend ng classic. Experts continue to remind the public to avoid long exposure to the heat unless necessary and always stay hydrated to avoid injury. Jed Neresina, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Starting tomorrow, April 11 until Saturday, April 13, online classes will be implemented across all levels, whether private or public schools, throughout the entire province of Bulacan. This directive comes in accordance with the memorandum order issued today by Governor Daniel Fernando. This decision is prompted by the prevailing hot weather conditions in the country, aiming to safeguard the health of both students and teachers. Based on the forecast from Pagasa, Bulacan province is expected to experience 
experience a heat index ranging from 39 to 41 degrees Celsius in the coming days, categorized as extreme heat caution. The public is reminded to stay indoors as much as possible and only venture out for essential activities to avoid heat-related illnesses such as heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke. Furthermore, all mayors have been instructed through their respective municipal or city disaster risk reduction management officers to monitor their areas closely and promptly send situation reports to the Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction Management Office. A lawmaker is pushing for a longer term of office for barangay officials. Senator Aimee Marcos filed Senate Bill 2629 seeking to fix the term of office of all elected barangay officials to six years. Under the proposed measure, no barangay elective official shall serve for more than two consecutive terms. Marcos, who also chairs the Senate Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation, believes the present three-year term is too short for barangay officials to see and implement their projects. Thus, the presidential sister says fixing the term of office to six years would be sufficient and would enable barangay officials to comply with orders of both the national government and local government units and design their own policies within their localities. And for the news abroad, United Kingdom has decided that it will not stop the sales of arms by British companies to Israel. Yuji Sasaki details why, live. Yes, Yuji, good evening. Good evening, Maybin. At a press conference on Tuesday, April 9 in Washington, D.C., United Kingdom's Foreign Minister David Cameron said that the United Kingdom will not suspend its arms sales to Israel despite the pressure on the British government over the recent airstrike that killed eight workers from the World Central Kitchen, or WCK. His statement comes after the latest legal advice received on the matter was re reviewed and has so far concluded that their export licenses remain unchanged. He added that no other like-minded have suspended their arms export licenses to Israel and that Israel remains a defensive security partner to the UK. Last week, three former senior UK judges and more than 600 members of the British legal profession argued the need to suspend the arms sales as this would make Britain complicit in the genocide in Gaza. Meanwhile, Britain's opposition political parties called for the government to publish the legal advice that allowed the government to reach its position on the matter. However, Cameron defended that the minister should act consistently according to the legal advice without publishing it. We want to see 500 trucks a day. We want to see the water switch back on. We want to see Ashdod and a northern crossing point opened. And crucially, we want to see this deconfliction because getting aid to Gaza on its own isn't enough. Back to you, Maven. Thank you, Yuji Sasaki from Japan. As the Russian attacks escalated last month, the United Nations Human Rights Office reported a sharp increase in civilian deaths and injuries in Ukraine. The UN, the UN Human Rights Monitoring Mission reported at least 604 civilians and at least 57 children killed or injured in March. As the death toll has risen by 20% since February, the mission also found that 93.5% of civilian fatalities occurred in government-controlled areas, as well as damages to critical infrastructure, schools and health facilities. The Rights Office also explained that the rise in casualties were mainly due to Russia's use of missiles and munitions across Ukraine and increased aerial bombardments near the front line. We'll share more global stories with you later, but for now, back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Maven. For those watching our live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok.
A transport group has urged the Land Transportation, Franchising and Regulatory Board, or LTFRB, to expedite its resolution on the request of jeepney drivers to increase the minimum fare from the current 13 pesos to 15 pesos. This is due to the continuous increase in the prices of petroleum products. However, passengers are complaining about this proposed fare increase. Ryan Nakalale will tell us why. Alliance of Transport Operators and Drivers Association of the Philippines is appealing to the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board to expedite their request for a 2 peso fare increase for jeepneys. If approved, the minimum jeepney fare will increase from current 13 pesos to 15 pesos. Uh, wala pang ano, wala pang uh, resolution pero nung huling may hearing namin, sub, uh, submit for resolution, gagawa na ng resolution ng LTFRB. Pero wala pa. Uh, hindi ko pa alam, uh, siguro baka, baka bukas uh, punta ako ng LTFRB. Tanungin ko yun kasi tumataas ang tumataas ang diesel eh. However, public commuters are already expressing their concern about the impending fare hike, questioning how they will manage their daily expenses with their minimum wage earnings. Masyado malaki na po yung dos pesos eh. Niisip po nga po kailan kaya bababa yung pamasahay. Kasi hindi pa nga po nagtataas yung, yung sahod namin. Minimum magka 610. Tapos yung mga bilihin po pataas. Parang wala akong na, ano, na mayat, mayat taas na po yung ano, eh, bilihin eh. Ayun o, oh, mabigat na po talaga yun. Ngayon pa lang mabigat na mabigat na yung ano na ganun kataas 13 tapos sa tricycle 15. Mamtsa ko ako eh. Mm-hmm. Uy, babawasan ng pamatay magkano 15 15 hanggang doon sa road magkano na? 30 na laking bawas din po. Eh dati ano lang, baby lang ito ano. Some commuters understand the flight of jeepney drivers. Oo po, nakakaawa din. Kasi lalo na sa panahon din ngayon kasi ma- sa taas din ang bilihin. Yun po, kailangan din naman nila. Jeepney drivers argue that the fare increase is necessary due to the rising cost of diesel and other essential goods. Apart from diesel, the prices of his spare parts are also increasing along with the cost of the repairs when their vehicle breaks down. They also mentioned that their earnings from driving aren't always good. Kung tataas ang diesel natin, uh, dadagdagan man ng 2 pesos, so bali mapapaltan po naman yung, kung mawawalan kami sa pagtaas ang diesel ng 200, mapapaltan po ng, sa dagdag pumasahin ng 200 din. Siguro po, okay na po yun, pero sana matuloy. Baka pag ganyan, nagdagdagan ng dalawang piso na ganyan. Baka yung halos na ano, makakonsume mo namin, di, di mo ako po dala sa krudo, di ba? Ganun lang siguro mangyayari. Malaki, basta malaking bagay siya. Ryan Lacanlale, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. reiterated that after April 30, the franchise consolidation will not be extended anymore. JP Nunez details why. During the Bagong Pilipinas Town Hall meeting on traffic concerns in San Juan City earlier today, April 10, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. reiterated that the April 30 deadline for franchise consolidation is already final. He said there will be no extension and the Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program or PUVMP will pursue after the deadline. Wala na, wala na pong extension yung, uh, yung modernization. The President also assured that the government will make it affordable for operators to avail modernized unit of public utility vehicles. Ang tinitiyak lang namin na hindi mapabigat pa ang uh, babayaran at uh, iutang ng uh, driver operator. Kaya uh, ginagawa nating maayos at ginagawa nating well organized yung sistema na yan. On his part, Secretary Jaime Bautista, as the head of transport sector, stressed that consolidation of PUVs into cooperatives or corporations will help address traffic congestion in Metro Manila. This will be the expected result of fleet management and dispatch system. 
As to date, there are already 80% of PUVs who consolidated from more than 70% recorded on December 2023 deadline. Office of Transportation Cooperatives or OTC will open its offices on weekends to accommodate operators who still want to form cooperatives. Itong remaining uh, days ng April, bawat Sabado ay magbubukas ang Office of Transportation Cooperatives para talagang uh, mapagbigyan natin, talagang uh, ma 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 accommodate natin yung mga gustong humabol pa. Obet Martin of Pasang Mazda rejoices as PBBM declared the final deadline of consolidation. It was during his privilege to ask question during the town hall meeting when he asked President Marcos to end the consolidation by April 13. Dinaldo ka ng Pangulo, aming ikinututuwa ito at uh, ito yung napakalaking indikasyon na ang hanay ng transportasyon ay mahalaga sa ating bayan. Meanwhile, the transport groups Manibela and Piston will hold a press conference in Quezon City tomorrow, April 11, to reiterate their objection to PUVMP and their call to reinstate the five-year validity of franchise among public transportations. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And in other global news, Federal Aviation Administration or FAA is investigating multiple new claims from another whistleblower, a former longtime Boeing quality engineer, Sam Salipur. Salipur alleged yesterday, April 9, that Boeing has taken shortcuts to meet production deadlines of its 787 Dreamliner. Some of the allegations were disregard of the company's procedures to ensure fuselages were fitted correctly and that the workers have applied excessive stress on the major airplane joints to narrow the gap. Boeing stated that it has complete confidence with its 787 Dreamliner and denied allegations or retaliation on Salipur after raising his concerns and that the allegations were inaccurate. The company further stated that it held back its planned deliveries for nearly two years after concerns on fitting and joining fuselages were identified in 2020 and only resumed its delivery in 2022 after FAA has given its green light. This new allegation comes after the January accident when part of a 737 MAX jet blew midway through the flight. Salipur will testify next week before the Senate Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations where Boeing is expected to cooperate. FAA has given Boeing a deadline in May 2024 to address its manufacturing quality and assurance issues. The parents of the gunmen in a Michigan school shooting which claimed the lives of four students have become the first ever convicted of involuntary manslaughter in the United States. Jennifer and James Crumbly, the suspects, are facing sentences of 10 to 15 years in prison. The couple has been incarcerated for two years due to their alleged failure to prevent their son from carrying out the shooting at a Michigan school. Judge Matthews of the Oakland County Circuit Court in Pontiac, Michigan, also prohibited the Crumbly's from contacting the families of their son's victims. Ethan Crumbly, who was 15 years old at the time of the mass shooting, pleaded guilty to 24 charges, including first-degree murder. He has been sentenced to life in prison without parole. Prosecutors have attributed the damage to the parents' negligence, leading to their conviction. The Crumblies have been behind bars for 858 days awaiting their sentencing, which will be reduced from their overall sentence. With regard to Jennifer Crumbly, it is the sense of this court, Ms. Crumley, that you served 10 to 15 years with the Michigan Department of Corrections. You and your agents may not have any contact with fam the families of Madison Baldwin, Tate Muir, Hannah St. Juliana, and Justin Schilling. Um, I will issue another ruling with regard to contact um, with your son, the shooter. 
Meanwhile, according to the White House, the Biden administration is making every effort to prevent and address the issue of gun violence in the country. Under the leadership of this president of this administration, we'll continue to use every tool at our disposal to implement these and other common sense gun safety measures to protect our children. We're going to Tension is escalating between Mexico and Ecuador following the unauthorized raid by police officers on the Mexican embassy in Quito, Ecuador. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Mexico has released footage of the police raid, denouncing the law enforcement action as unauthorized and violent. The ministry has condemned Ecuador for allegedly violating international accords that provide protection to embassies from law enforcement interference. The video also shows the arrest of former Ecuadorian Vice President Jorge Glass after seeking refugee in the embassy following his conviction on corruption-related charges. Mexico has assured that they will bring the issue to international courts and tribunals. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Maven Cariso live from Perth, Australia. Good evening. In the ongoing preliminaries of the UN TV Volleyball League Season 2, the AFP Lady Gunner will attempt to halt the winning momentum of the rookie team Kamalek Suffragettes in their showdown in Paco Arena, Manila tomorrow, April 11. Currently leading the standings is Kamalek with a pristine 3-0 win-loss record, while the AFP has two wins and one loss. In the second game, witness the clash between the PNP Lady Patrollers and BFP Lady Firefighters at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The BFP aims to secure their first victory. And in the third game, witness the battle between the Senate Lady Defenders and DFA Emissaries at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. The Senate currently holds the second spot with a 2-1 win-loss record, while DFA is eager to grab their first win. You can still catch the live action of UVL Season 2 games on the UNTV News and & Rescue and UNTV Sports YouTube channels. Arca Sambahai as the world faces these trying times amid the various challenges and uncertainties, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity. Good day. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. While safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament, there is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much, and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. Before we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 6, verse 6, it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. And those are the reasons behind the news April 10, 2024. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. Because we need to know. We will always ask why. I'm Harding Delgado. We serve the people. We give glory to God.
the naval patrols, we just saw Trilateral plus Australia, a new form of quadrilateral joint naval patrols last week, so you can expect to see more of that in the future. So, may mga batang may kidney disease, may leukemia, may pag tinamaan pa ng pertussis, yan baka yan ang compromise. O, baka yan pa yung mamatay. So, yun yun. Very young, may, uh, may, ano tawag ito, malnourished or undernourished, may associated condition, at yung late na diagnosis. The most important is magpapakuna na lang. Kahit iwasan mo yan, kung wala kang magpapakuna, pwede ka pa rin magpapakuna. The best uh, defense is really vaccine, the pentavalent vaccine. Yung ganitong senaryo na mainit at saka maalinsangan dahil sa easterly at saka sa high pressure area is posible pa rin na mangyari hanggang sa kalagitnaan ng Mayo. So ilan linggo pa natin itong mararamdaman and possible sa first half ng May ay mas mata matataas pa yung mga hit indices natin na maitatala. Uh, wala pang ano, wala pang uh, resolusyon pero nung huling may hearing namin, sub, uh, submit for resolusyon, gagawa na ng resolusyon ng LPFRB. Pero wala pa. Uh, hindi ko pa alam. Uh, siguro baka, baka bukas uh, punta ako na LTPAR. Tanungin ko yun kasi tumataas ang tumataas ang diesel eh. Sa tao huli-hulihan ay eh, asahan ninyo. Wala na, wala na pong extension yung, uh, yung madamses. Ang tinitiyak lang namin na hindi mapabigat pa ang uh, babayaran at uh, iutang ng uh, driver operator. Kaya talaga ginagawa nating maayos at ginagawa nating well-organized yung sistema na yan. Itong remaining uh, days ng April, bawat Sabado ay magbubukas ang Office of Transportation Cooperatives para talagang uh, mapagbigyan natin, talagang uh, ma ma ma-accommodate natin yung mga gustong humabol pa. Take your to Jennifer Crumley. It is the sense of this court, Ms. Cromley, that you served 10 to 15 years with the Michigan Department of Corrections. You and your agents may not have any contact with fam the families of Madison Baldwin, Tate Mayer, Hannah St. Juliana, and Justin Schilling. Um, I will issue another ruling with regard to contact um, with your son, the shooter. We want to see 500 trucks a day, we want to see the water switch back on, we want to see Ashdod and a northern crossing point opened, and crucially we want to see this deconfliction because getting aid to Gaza on its own isn't enough.